bringing you only the best in dental products. Clicks. Feel good. Pay less. And it is now time for our oral health care chat. And as I've been mentioning to you, last year the FDI, World Dental Federation, launched their three-year campaign, which is themed, Be Proud of Your Mouth. And Be Proud of Your Mouth is not just about having a perfect mouth, it is also about having a healthy one. The World Dental Federation would like people to value and take care of their oral health and to make the correct decisions in order to protect oral health cavity. Now, this good oral status will require a lot of action. Be proud of your mouth by doing this. For example, be proud of your mouth by visiting the dentist regularly. Be proud of your mouth by brushing your teeth twice a day. Be proud of your mouth by cutting down on sugary treats. To inspire action, we need to explain why, and this is where the campaign strapline fits in. In 2021, the World Dental Federation encouraged the public to take action by focusing on the importance of oral health in order to enhance overall health. Now, in 2022, they're reiterating this message by highlighting the fact that an unhealthy mouth can severely impact every aspect of life. And that is what they're calling upon everyone to look after their oral health for their happiness and well-being. Now, today's oral health interview is proudly brought to you by the South African Dental Association, known as SADA, in association with the Oral Hygienist Association of South Africa, OHASA. SADA's vision is to be recognized as the trusted leader and voice of oral health care in Southern Africa, and their mission is to promote the interest and serve the needs of the members, and above all, encourage optimal oral health care for all South Africans. So learn more about the South African Dental Association by visiting sada.co.za. Now, uh, this brings us then, of course, uh, to our chat today. So, as I mentioned to you, a World Oral Health Day on the 20th. This is all a build-up to it. And uh, we are joined today by Martina Amod. And uh, our topic today that will center around oral care and pediatrics. Now, Martina is a qualified oral hygienist who's working out in the KZN area. She qualified at the University of the Western Cape in 2015 and has since attained a uh, postgraduate qualifications in social and behavioral sciences in public health and she's currently in the process of attaining a master's of medical science so absolutely wonderful to have you with us on the line uh martina good afternoon and thank you so much uh, for taking time and joining us here on clicks live how are you doing Good afternoon, Google. I'm very well, thank you. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. No, absolutely wonderful to talk to you today. And what we're talking about today is oral care in pediatrics. So uh, all of a sudden, because as soon as we just think oral care, we think, ah, you know what, this is something for grown-ups. But it is, I suppose it is something that has got to start from day one, from day one, really. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, from the day you've got a tooth, you've got to implement oral care. That's how it goes. And children develop teeth at as early as six months old. Okay. So and you've got a tooth, you've got, whether you've got one or whether you've got a full set of 32, the important stands, you've got to take care of them. Yeah. I want to ask you, this is my first question. At what age should a child start visiting the dentist or an oral hygienist in, for that particular matter? So there's a little bit of controversy around this one. My personal opinion is as long as a child has a tooth, they're ready to go and see the dentist or oral hygienist. Obviously, we're not talking now major procedures, full-on consultations, anything like that. Um, if your first tooth has erupted, a few more teeth erupted by one year old, maybe two years old, and mom's going for their regular six monthly cleaning and checkup, or, you know, an older brother or sister are going... It's highly recommended that the little one goes along. Okay. Just to orientate themselves, you know, with the dental surroundings, the practitioners, the different sounds and smells that come along with the visit. Just so that, you know, when it's time at around maybe three or four years old for them to actually get in the chair and have that checkup and have that polish, they're already comfortable in the environment. They feel safe in this environment and it's not, you know, a big shock to yeah. them. Yeah. Look, the reason I'm asking you that, because I suppose fear is a big thing. And I want to get to that because I, I, I know a lot of parents, also as a young parent myself, uh, that this was always the thing, the, the, the fear around it. And even as a grown-up, I mean, I can't even begin to describe. But uh, and this is why I'm asking you about when is the first visit. But if we could just backtrack from that quickly. 
When, 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 when baby is there, I mean, now the teeth are forming, you know, the first couple of teeth are coming out after a couple of months. When, when we look at uh, basic oral hygiene practices, now we're talking brushing, these sort of things. I mean, do you start from as, as soon as the first te- tooth uh, shows signs of being there? Absolutely. So as soon as that very first tooth has erupted, um, you'll find all sorts of products on the market to care for baby teeth, um, baby safe toothpaste. So, you know, if baby swallows a little bit or eats mm. half of it, it's completely safe and it's okay. As well as the very first stages of toothbrushes and these little um, finger cups yes, that you yes. can put on and use to clean the baby's tooth. So from the eruption of the very first tooth, it's absolutely essential that we remove any plaque, any debris, anything that forms on that baby tooth. Yeah, it's funny you should say the finger brush thing. You know, I know it eventually became a puppet of sorts, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I remember that quite clearly. Now, one, so if you start with the good practices, obviously, you know, problems carry in. And uh, something that I've, that I've recently learned, this word carries. And I just want you to explain that to people. Okay, so dental caries is basically a cavity. Okay. It's the formation of a hole in the tooth, or basically the tooth has started rotting. Ultimately, that's bad. We don't want it. No one wants a cavity. No one wants a rotten tooth. And by removing plaque regularly, ideally twice a day, every day, um, you're removing the causative agent for forming caries or for forming a cavity. Yeah. Now the thing is, in an in, in early child, uh, for, for 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 early childhood caries, can we call it that? I mean, is this something that is prevalent? Because I I think I've seen quite a number of youngsters that you know it looks like something is not hundred percent. Exactly. It's extremely prevalent, especially in South Africa. We've got a big, it's, it's a big thing on our hands, you know, in toddlers. So from baby to, I would say, about four or five years old, I'm sure you've walked around looking at little toddlers at a birthday party. You're bound to see someone that looks like when the little girl, little boy smiles, they've got these big cavities with these big holes in their front teeth. Yeah. That is what early childhood caries is. So basically what causes early childhood caries, um, a lot of children these days are on formula and they're drinking formula, you know, through a bottle, through a sippy cup, or mom and dad give them some juice in a sippy cup. And what they do is they fall off to sleep with this bottle. So they fall off to sleep suckling. And very seldomly do you think, okay, you know what, baby's asleep now, let me remove the bottle, let me clean baby's teeth, and then let baby go to sleep. So ultimately, this bad habit of this sugary substance being in contact with the tooth surface for extended periods of time is what causes these teeth to demineralize uh, and cause cavities. Uh, yes, yes. And, and, and I mean, obviously, because if baby's falling asleep, I mean, that's peace and quiet, you know what I mean? Exactly. So for mom and dad, it's a miracle fix. You know what? We'll pop this bottle in, give them some formula, and we've got a few. We've got a few hours to ourselves. Yeah, and I really, yeah, what baby should be doing is drinking their milk or drinking their little juice, um, having some water afterwards. You know, just to get, neutralize the pH of the mouth, get rid of that acidity, get rid of that sugary substance, and then being put off to sleep. And and so this when. Mm. Yes, uh, sorry, Martina, because this is a very practical tip. So if I had to give formula or milk or juice or whatever it is in a bottle to to the baby or, or toddler just as they would doze off, it's almost like have have a, a bottle of water on hand as well so you could just swap out bottles. Exactly. That is exactly what we try and push for and motivate for. I mean, baby needs their milk. We're not trying to mm. take that mm. away from them or deprive them of that because then you're just going to have unhappy baby, unhappy mom and dad, and we don't want that. So let your baby have their formula. Let them have the juice, whatever it is you're giving to them. But thereafter, make sure that they wash it down with a little bit of water. So it doesn't even have to be a whole bottle of water. Let them drink a couple of sips. Let it wash over their teeth nicely just to neutralize that pH in yes. the whole cavity and ensure that we don't have that sugary substance lasting there now until they wake up. Yeah, no, I appreciate that because that's an exceptionally practical example because uh, that that would be it. And of course, then also from from the the youngest possible age, you know, to I suppose to to, to start doing the brushing and the rinsing and, and all of that, just get it sort of practicing. 
Exactly. It's all about habit formation. So children are very impressionable. Um, you see them mimic the things you do on a daily basis. They just need to hear or see something once, and before you know it, they're copying you. They do, they're mimicking that exact behavior. So if you, as a parent or even an older sibling, are teaching this child or this yeah. toddler a healthy habit at a young age, such as brushing teeth twice a day, even though they're physically not able to do it by themselves, the mere fact that you're taking them to the bathroom and, you know, giving them a toothbrush in the morning, even if it's just to play with, and then again in the evening, you're forming healthy habits. And that and that is really the, the important thing, uh, I, I would imagine. That is absolutely the important thing. Now, I want to ask you something completely on the other side, because I've heard this word, fissure. And I, I'm, I've, I've got no idea what it is. What, 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 what is Fisher got to do with, 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 with dental goodies? So, if you have a look at your teeth, we've got, we've got front teeth, we've got back teeth. Yes. Our back teeth have little grooves on the biting surfaces. Yes. Those are called fissures. Ah. So, is this where the people reference a, a, a fissure sealant? Exactly. So what happens is when you're eating, well, whatever it is you're eating, um, especially sticky, um, you know, substances that tend to get stuck in between those grooves of those teeth. Yes. Those teeth are extremely susceptible to the development of cavities or dental caries. So a fissure sealant is actually something that we put into those fissures or into those grooves of the teeth as a preventative measure. Um, and we try and place it in children between the ages of, well, their permanent molars start erupting at around 12 years, up to 12 years old. Yeah. So we try and place it between the ages of, you know, 12 to 16 years old. And we try and maximize protection on those teeth because now these are brand new teeth. Yeah. Permanent teeth that need to last these children for the rest of their lives. So we place these fissure sealants as preventative measure. It's a completely atraumatic, super simple procedure, non-invasive at all. And what it does is it sort of fills these grooves or these fissures and uh, produces a protective layer so that food and uh, bacteria don't get trapped in between these grooves or fissures, which is a perfect harboring ground for the bacteria, which cause dental caries. Okay. And I understand that because that obviously then minimizes, like you say, the, the bacteria to grow and, you know, and uh, lead to the carry and all of that. Uh, so definitely it's like an extra layer of protection. It's almost like a constant flush or brush, if you will, in it. But now how long does this last? If this some, is this something that uh, a feature sealant, does this have a bit of longevity? So it does. Um, look, it's done, obviously, depending on the age of the child. Um, there's a lot of factors which come into play um, with regards to how long it lasts. But, I mean, mm. if you've got a 12-year-old, a good cooperative child, and we're able to place an optimum sealant, that sealant should last them, you know, I've seen patients now in their 20s and 30s, and I see fissure sealants still on those teeth. And wow. they say, yeah, I have this place at 12 or 14 years old, and those were like really well-placed fissure sealants. And these patients have also had really excellent oral hygiene practices. Just on a whole, they were very cooperative patients. Yeah. But then in other cases, you know, we do try and place these sealants for a very squirmishly say, eight-year-old, and we're unable to get good moisture control and everything that comes with it. And we do notify mom and dad, look, um, this might last for a couple of months, it might last for a couple of years, and then it might fall out, um, which is normal. And yeah. we can replace it just until we get your little one out of that danger zone. And they're able to take responsibility for their own oral health and ensure that they're capable with the required skills to prevent cavities from forming. Okay. But, you know, I've got so many questions because uh, uh, it is absolutely brilliant talking to you. And if you've just joined us in store, welcome to Clicks. Uh, with us on the line today is uh, Martina Ahmad, who is a qualified oral hygienist. And we're talking uh, oral care in, in pediatrics. And, of course, uh, it's all with a lead up to World Oral Health Day, which is just three days away on the 20th of this month. Now, I've got so many questions for you because one of the things I want to ask you, and I want to I make sort of a 12-year-old because I want to ask 
ask you, what is what is the ideal oral routine for a child, uh, let's say under the age of twelve? Because in twelve, you kind of you kind of have some. Uh, let's call it common sense. There is some sort of sense, but I also because you've been giving great tips, and especially with with a baby, and I, I want to get into more tips, and especially with a fear around dentists for the, for the young ones. So let me ask you that: what, what would be an ideal uh, oral hygiene routine then for a child, let's say under the age of twelve? Okay, so look, we we can break it up into stages. So for baby, obviously, it's not practical to say baby needs to brush those little four teeth that he has in his mouth yeah. twice a day. That's not going to happen. And also, we've got mainly a milk formula pureed food diet. So okay. in baby, let's say up to the age of about two years old, Ideally, mom should be taking, you know, a lukewarm wet face cloth or a little brush and she should be gently brushing the teeth for baby just to ensure that we've got all that plaque removal and we've got nice, clean, healthy teeth. Yeah. From about two years old, you can provide your baby with their own toothbrush. Like I said, they come in different stages. So, you know, you get them a nice soft one that they're not able to do much damage. You let them stand in front of the mirror. But here it's all about habit formation. So every morning without fail, you know, the first thing they do when they wake up is that they they need to brush their teeth. So that is sort of embedded in their psychology. And as they grow up, you'll see, you you get adults these days that tell you, I can't do anything until I've brushed my teeth in the morning. It's Uh. because of this behavior formation. So you put baby in front of the mirror, you give your little toddler a toothbrush, and you let them brush, and you teach them a technique which is why it's also important to bring them into the dentist so that we can teach them a good technique. They form their little circles and they brush. It's thereafter very important for mom and dad to have a look and make sure that all the plaque has been effectively removed. And if it hasn't, just to go over with the brush themselves and remove all of this plaque. Uh. So from about the age of two up to six, you can do that. By the time they start shedding their primary dentition and their permanent dentition starts erupting, now it's time to start taking more responsibility because obviously they're also a little bit older, they're more responsible, and they're more receptive to the information that we provide. So now they can understand and they need to brush. So you show them what half to brush, you show them a good technique. And now at about six or seven years old, if they still have plaque, mom and dad will check after they've brushed. Now it's not time to take the brush and remove it for them. Now you point it out to them. So you say, have a look over here. Do you see the spot you missed? You can effectively show them how to remove that plaque. So now you're basically providing them with more skills to become independent. Uh, So uh. I would say up until the age of 12, brushing twice a day is compulsory. It's non-negotiable. Maybe from a bigger age of about, you know, six, seven years old, we can start introducing a mouth rinse. Yeah. Um, obviously an age-specific one, one with a good content of fluoride, and they're a bit bigger now, so they're less likely to drink it. Than yeah, 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 um, yeah. And then I think from about 12 years old and going up, we try and implement flossing. Anything under 12 is a little bit young, and, you know, they tend to struggle a little bit. So up until 12, my, my suggestion would be brushing twice a day and a mouth rinse from about seven. Okay. So yeah, no, that 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 explains it absolutely perfectly in terms of uh, the routine you got to use. Now I want to ask you this because for me this is a bit of an elephant in the room because I mean generally you know oral hygiene as dentists they get a bit of a bad rap because you only visit them. Most people they don't regularly visit them. You kind of go them when you're in your worst state when you're in awful awful pain. So with this you know there's there's a lot of fear trepidation you know and and I'm not even talking about little people. I'm talking about me, big people, grown ups. <laughs> you know there is a bit of a fear going to a dentist is there a way that uh, that you can sort of best prepare a toddler a young one for for that first visit to the dental practice definitely so look i get where you're coming from with the stigma and like you mentioned the main reason dentists have such a bad if you could say reputation or stigma attached is because patients tend to wait until they've got a toothache and they're in excruciating pain and then they have no option but to drag Mm. themselves to the dentist. Mm. And naturally, it's not going to be a pleasant experience. I mean, now you need to have an actual procedure done. It's something invasive. It's something that just has a whole negative connotation. And the very first step to avoiding your child having or, or to preparing your child for a positive first visit is to ensure that that first visit is not because of pain or septic. To make sure it's a pleasant visit, you need to take your child to the dentist before your child needs to go to the dentist. Uh. 
like that first visit you've got to at home it's got to be positive reinforcement you can't be telling your child on a daily basis don't eat so much of sweets otherwise I'm going to take you to the dentist because automatically that's forming a negative connotation in their mind and that's so what we do isn't it Exactly. It's, it's done on a daily basis. We see it on a daily basis and we're trying to move towards educating parents. Don't do that. Tell your children, look, you're going to brush your teeth. Give your children a reward for brushing your teeth. You know, the star system. Um, they get a new toothbrush or a funky toothpaste um, once they reach a certain reward. All of these are positive reinforcements and they make the oral hygienist a fun place to go. So take your little star chart with all the rewards to the oral hygienist and make it seem as though, you know what, this is a good place to be. It's somewhere healthy to be. It's somewhere fun. And the oral hygienist is going to reward you. She's going to praise you for your good work. Let it be something or someone that they want to impress. Yeah, yeah. And it, it is, you know what, it is such a practical and such a straightforward and easy explanation listening to you. But it is about that positive reinforcement and uh, reinforcement and as well as the language language that we use uh it is that let me ask you this how do you deal with uncooperative to uh, toddlers that come into your practice <laughs> oh that's a tricky one so we we've seen it all my biggest suggestion to parents is if your child is in excruciating amounts of pain please don't ask your dentist to hold your baby down and just pull that tooth yeah. out because I promise you, this is where lifelong fears come from. This is why we have, you know, 50-year-old CEOs of companies who have accomplished so much in life, but when they have to come and have their cleaning done, they are terrified. This is all because of a really, really terrible experience during their childhood, you know, when you've got someone holding your hand, someone holding your legs. And unfortunately, it's, it's a reality. We see this happening in private practice. And you think, you know what, with technology and how things have advanced, this wouldn't be a necessity anymore. So my advice is to stay away from this altogether. Again, I'll come back to visiting the dentist and oral hygienist more frequently before there's a problem. But should you present with a problem already, now you've got a toothache, there's nothing you can do about it, you need to take this child through. Behavior conditioning is very important. So you take your child through for the first visit and you take it at their pace. If they're happy to open their mouth and do a little bit of a clean, then that's great. If yeah. they become unresponsive or unreceptive, you know, the minute you try and bring in anesthetic or something like that, I mean, if we can manage rescheduling and doing it at another visit, then ideally that's what we do. But then we always have the theater option also. This is for now treating pain and sepsis. Um, in the long run, it is always better if you've got a child, for example, with early childhood caries, multiple problems that need to be sorted out. You rather book a theater visit, let your child be asleep, sort everything out, mm. one go, and then they wake up, you know, feeling like, okay, this is a little bit funny, it was weird, I don't know what happened, instead of them having this, you know, traumatic experience with the kicking and screaming and the needles, and then they associate the smells of the dentist and, you know, the face of the practitioner. Yeah. So, and it all comes down to we just have to focus on behavior modification and conditioning. Yeah. Listen, you, you've put everything so succinctly. You've even made me want to go to the dentist right now, to be honest with you. Uh, <laughs> I'm not you yet. <laughs> I'm not you yet, but uh, we can maybe alter the timetable. <laughs> Bettina, thank you so much for joining us. If any of our listeners would like to get hold of you, how can they do that? They're more than welcome to. We are very, very happy to attend to them. So basically, um, what I will do is I will leave my contact details with you. I will also leave my practice contact details with you. You know, if they've got further questions or if they'd like to just pop in for a consultation, get some advice, I'll leave all of those details with you and you're welcome to pass it on to them. Sure. And we'll take it from there. Excellent, excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you so much for your time. Uh, is there is there perhaps an email or something you could give me right now on air? Yes, definitely. Please do. Uh, so let's give you our, our HASA, our Oral Hygienist Association email address. Yes. Someone will definitely respond to all queries there. You guys can reach us at OHASA KZN. So it's O H A S A. -S -S 
kzn at gmail.com. Excellent. 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 Thank you so much. Listen, it has been an absolute joy, absolute pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much uh, for your time here today. It has been a real pleasure, Martina. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Absolute pleasure.